What's up guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to set up the PlayStation 2 emulator PCSX2 and I will be using Windows 11. Okay guys, the first thing we're going to do is head on over to 7zip.org, the link to this page is in the description below, and we're going to download 7zip because we're going to use it to extract our emulator and our BIOS file. Then we're going to head over to PCSX2.net, this is where we will download the emulator, and we're going to download the nightly version. So right here where it says latest nightly, you have the option to download x64 for Windows, Linux, and you have an Apple version. I'm on Windows, so I'm going to download x64. So here on my desktop, I have my PS2 BIOS and the PCSX2 emulator. Now I'm sorry guys, I cannot leave a link to where I got my PS2 BIOS. If you guys just do a quick Google search, I'm pretty sure you'll find what you're looking for. First, we're gonna extract the BIOS file using 7-Zip. If you already have 7-Zip installed, all you have to do is right click on the BIOS, go to show more options if you're in Windows 11. If you're in Windows 10, you're gonna see 7-Zip right here once you right click. And then we're gonna go to 7-Zip and extract the PS2 BIOS. This created a new folder containing all of our BIOS files. There we are. Now we're gonna do the same thing to the actual emulator. Right click on it, show more options, 7-Zip, extract the PCSX2. And now we have a folder containing our emulator and all of the additional files. Now we no longer need these two zip folders so we can go ahead and highlight those and delete them. Let's open our emulator folder and this file right here will be the actual emulator. Welcome to PCSX2. If you want to change the language, you can do that here. I'm going to leave it at default. I speak English. For the theme, I'm fine with the dark gray, but if you prefer to change that, you can browse through these and check out the different themes that they have to offer. Next. And now we need to load our BIOS into the emulator. So let's click on Browse. My BIOS is here on my desktop. PS2 BIOS. Select Folder. And there we are, my BIOS contained a Europe, Japan, and a USA BIOS. Go ahead and highlight the BIOS you wanna use and hit next. Now we're gonna add our PS2 ROMs to the emulator. Go ahead and click on add, locate wherever you have your PS2 ROMs installed on your PC. Mine are on an external hard drive, right here, PS2 games, select folder. Would you like to scan this directory? Yes. Next. Now we can map out our controller for port one and port two. I only have one controller connected to my PC, so it's gonna be port one, and it's an Xbox One controller. So let's go to automatic mapping for port one, and the emulator has detected my Xbox One controller, it's X input controller. And just like that, the emulator will automatically map your controls out for you. So basically, this means my Y button on my Xbox controller will be triangle, B will be circle, A will be cross, and X will be square. Next, setup complete, finish. And as you see, all of my games are loading in. Now, if you wanna change your games from being in this list format, then you come up here to the top and click on these four little squares. And this is gonna change your game layout to an icon layout. Now you can add cover art to these icons as well. First, what you wanna do is create a new folder on your desktop. So right click, new folder, and we're just gonna name this folder PS2 Box Art. And then you wanna head over to this site called steamgriddb.com. Link to this page is in the description below. And right here in the search bar, you wanna type in the name of the game that you need box art for. So let's say we want to get box art for a Def Jam Fight for New York. Now you're going to get multiple options here. You got Xbox, PS2, GameCube, and of course we came here for PS2. So let's go ahead and click on this PS2 cover. And then over here to the right, you're going to see download. Now go ahead and right click on the image, save image as, find that folder on our desktop, PS2 box art. You can go ahead and rename this picture, Def Jam, Fight for NY, save. Now head back over to PCSX2, locate that game. There it is, Def Jam, Fight for New York. Right click on it, go to set cover image, 
and locate the folder where you saved your image select the image and there we are that game now has cover art now i will admit this will be time consuming if you have a bunch of roms so this is optional now let's go up to settings and go down to graphics now for the renderer we're going to leave that on automatic for the adapter if your pc has an actual graphics card then you want to change the adapter to your graphics card otherwise it's going to try to run games using your cpu full screen mode make sure to leave that borderless full screen for the aspect ratio if you want to play your games the way ps2 games were intended to be played that's a four to three aspect ratio then leave it at four to three now if you prefer to play your games in widescreen then you want to change this to 16 to 9. now some games may look a little stretched out but you can barely tell and at the bottom make sure anti-blur is checked this will give you a smoother image and if it seems like when you're in game, you're getting a lot of screen tear, then you can come back here and you can check V-Sync. But for right now, leave it off. Now let's go over to rendering. Now for the internal resolution, you can go all the way up to 8K, but most people only have a 1080p, 1440p, or 4K monitor. In my case, I'm gonna go four times because I have a 1440p monitor. In isotropic filtering, we're gonna turn this all the way up to 16 times this will only make your games look better now look to your far left and let's go down to memory cards and here is where we're going to set up where our games can be saved so let's go ahead and click on create and we're going to select 32 megabytes i find that the work best go ahead and give your memory card a name i'm just going to call it saves now go ahead and click ok memory card saves created ok and then right here, we're going to right click on that memory card and we're going to click on use for port one. Now, if you look up here, port one has that memory card we just created called saves. Now, if you would like to create a second memory card, go ahead and repeat what I just showed you and save it in port two with a new name. Now we can go ahead and close. Now, I know I told you earlier that this emulator maps your controls out for you, but let's say you want to change some of your buttons around. Then you will go up to settings, controllers, select controller port one. So let's say we wanted to change our triangle button. You would just click on the triangle and then hit whatever new button on your controller that you want to be the triangle button. Now let's look back over to the left and at the bottom you'll see hotkeys. And in here you have multiple options you can go through and set up using your keyboard. Now one last thing we're going to do is go back up to settings, interface, and under game display, you're going to see start full screen. Go ahead and check that. So every time you load up a game, that game will start in full screen. Also make sure all of your PS2 ROMs are in a disk image file ISO format so they are playable on the emulator. To get your files in this format, use 7-zip to extract them. And now we can load up a game. Just click on it and it will start. Thank you guys for watching i hope this video was helpful if it was make sure to leave a like and if you would like to see my exclusive videos that can help you with this emulator and more then support my patreon and hopefully i will catch you guys in the next one peace